Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this past week in EDM, the past week. And uh, yeah, you know, let's hop into it as we always do. We got uh, 28 songs this week that I wanted to talk about. So let's jump into the first category, which is bad. Uh, and again, just remember, these are just my opinions on tracks. Do not take them as gospel truth. But um, we've got Dusty Cloud with Yo up first here. And I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, it kind of sounds like a, a ripoff track, honestly. Like it it feels like he's using Flodan's vocals um, like illegally, and I'm sure they're, I'm sure he's using them fine, all well and dandy, but it just sounds like they're being stripped off of something and, or it's like a, a bootleg of something else. And I don't know, just at five minutes and 20 seconds to the track was just a bit of a bore. It just didn't really do much. So I didn't really know what to feel about the song. I thought it was weird. Uh, up next, we've got Mike Williams and Fire Beats with Womp, uh, a very simple and linear big room house cut here. Um, pretty much like the definition of what a spin in big room house track is. Um, nothing to it other than kind of festival bait. And we've got Chami and Mala with When the Beat Bang. Uh, kind of an odd song for these two. The lyrics feel really silly at times, and the song just doesn't really go anywhere. There's all this build and hype into these drops, and it's just kind of the same three beat melody the whole time. The it just, yeah, I don't know. And then we've got Murdoch featuring Emily Rachel with Living in the Moment, a shockingly boring track for Murdoch here. Uh, it's got kind of a light drum and bass production and to the extent where it's like, if liquid drum and bass is like a lighter sound of drum and bass, this is like liquid, liquid drum and bass. Um, it's it's that light. Uh, also really wasn't jammed with Emily's vocals uh, on this one. I thought they were a little dry and lacked a, much range personally. Um, I thought it was just, yeah, very forgettable track for Murdoch, which is something I rarely ever say, I feel like. So, yeah. But then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, meh. Uh, we've got Pegboard Nerds, Sofon, and Rasur, I want to say, with Last Words. Uh, I'm really not sure what it is about this track, but the whole thing feels off to me. The whole track feels like something's just wrong. Um, it's a little bit of a faster-paced track uh, with some constant vocals here from uh, Rasur, I want to say. Rasos? Rasuros? I don't know. I'm sure I butchered that a, a bunch, but um, yeah, it just... It just feels off. Something about it is weird. It doesn't feel like it sounds like Pegboard Nerds. It doesn't sound like so fun. I just like, I don't know what it is about this track. Did not sit with me in a good way. Then we got Dylan Francis, IDK, and Eptic with OK OK uh, from the mixtape. Uh, this mixtape is Fire 2 uh, out now from Dylan Francis. And uh, yeah, this uh, this track has a lot of Eptic influence on it. Obviously, Eptic is the producer here, but it uh, feels like it's a, it's a lot, very much dominated by Eptic. Um, it's kind of a bizarre mix of like Moomba, Trap, and Dubstep that works in some areas, but feels super flat in others. Um, kind of same with the rapping. It felt a little all over the place. Some parts I really liked, there's some good bars, and others I was like, ooh, that was kind of cringe. So yeah, not uh, not too much on that one. Then we got Guilt Chip with Bad Sector. The Machine Language LP is out now from Guilt Chip, I believe, the debut from him. And um, yeah, got some hard-hitting dubstep with uh, a bit of a complexro flair to it. Um, very much a mechanized sound as the album kind of uh, the, its namesake. But uh, yeah, really like the rising staircase melody on the back end. Uh, but overall thought it was uh, meh, which is why it's here in meh. We got Calvin Harris featuring Sam Smith with the VIP of Desire. Uh, pretty boring VIP. Uh just takes more of like a deep house approach to it than the original was and just kind of neuters the punchiness of the original and just kind of takes away all of the the power that it had which didn't really have a, a ton the original but it just kind of just felt like you, you neutered the track personally We've got Mad Girl with Machine, a new track out now on Chompo, and we got some Speed House on Chompo with Mad Girl here. Uh, was just a quick hit of energy, um, but I did find the track to be a little bit too linear for my liking and for me to really want to come back to it a whole ton, but um, that was an okay tune. Then we've got Rack and Great Good Fine Okay with Fine. Um, very open production here that makes the vocals feel like you're kind of in a, a bit of a, like a large room setting with um, like a, almost like a cathedral of sorts. Maybe that's a little too extreme, but um, very like open and airy. Uh, it, it definitely makes for a more kind of personal listening experience. It feels like you're kind of in there with uh, with the vocalist. And um, yeah, yeah. It does make the mixing feel off a little bit, especially as it comes in and out with what it's doing in terms of um, the, the the grandeur of the room that it's trying to imitate where the vocals are. But um, yeah, I think as the namesake implies, though, I think this track is uh, just fine. We've got Sullivan King with uh, someone else, I should say, the Blank remix. The uh, Sullivan King's Overthrown album is now, which is just the remixes from uh, the the his 
LP, which the name is escaping me for some reason right now. But um, yeah, uh, I got to hear the song live at uh, the Monster Cat Compound, which was pretty cool. And uh, I still think, what I think about the song that I did originally when I first heard it, I think it's just an okay remix. Um, I like the idea of the kind of pseudo psytrance midsection, but um, felt like it wasn't executed with a whole ton of power or real like oomph behind it, um, which is a surprise for uh, me to say with a kind of heavy hitting dubstep track from Blank. But um, yeah, also I felt like the Sullivan King screaming vocals were a bit neutered um, and like muted throughout this remix. I felt like it didn't really have the energy behind it that it did from the original. So, and I really liked the original on someone else. So that's that. Uh, then we got graphics, uh, dance all day. Uh, wasn't vibing with the song a whole ton at first. That was pretty flat, especially considering how little there is in the low end um, throughout the majority of the track. But um, yeah, kind of found myself moving to it a little bit, schmoving. I was like, you know what? Uh, it's kind of just a mindless, high energy, just kind of get you moving track. And so um, in the end, do I do think it's meh, but. And then moving into the good category, we've got tons of songs in good this week, 16. We've got Midas featuring D.F. Frampton with Falling Into Mystery. Uh, honestly, one of the better melodic dubstep cuts, I think, of 2023. Uh, Dia's vocals are strong and not too cliche with the lyrics, and um, I thought the production was quite bright and happy, and uh, I enjoyed it. I think this was my favorite Midas track of the year. Then we've got Roman Silver and Casa Pedic with I-D-G-A-F, which is, I don't give a fuck. But uh, yeah, one of the uh, lightest drum and bass tunes you'll hear all year. Uh, Casa's vocals are like kind of mixed to feel a little bit more raw, similar to the rack track back in a little bit ago. But um, yeah, a little bit more less processing on it, which I think was a, a nice little uh, a touch to the track, which um, helped add to that kind of real aesthetic to this track. So I liked it. We got Barely Alive and Beast Boy with Sky High. The Casket Case EP is out now from Barely Alive. And um, I mean, Destructive Dubstep is the name of the game here. Um, but uh, when you got those kind of super high pitched synth licks coming in, kind of transports the track into a whole new place. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was short, but I thought it was a banger. So. Now we got Conroe with Waste in Time. Uh, yeah, just your kind of simplistic uh, summer house beat track from Conroe right in the dead of winter. Um, but yeah, nothing too super special production wise here. Just a solid, good track. Uh, I have to say about that. I've got Riot with Redemption. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm grooving with, uh, with, with more Riot here uh, on this newer stuff. I haven't been loving their kind of change of style, but uh, this one's not too bad. Um, it's kind of got like this odd one-two dubstep fusion with a kind of structure of a bass house track and uh it just feels like a, a, a very different song you don't hear a ton other than what ride is kind of doing nowadays but um i did enjoy the vocal chops i think they carried a lot of the track and i think that's the main reason i have it in good so uh yeah it was it was a weird weird song stylistically but i think tonally it worked quite well uh, then we got uh, Nanobi with a Moonlight, uh, one of my favorite modern Nanobi tracks. I think hands down, uh, this is the Euro trance that I enjoy and resonate with, I think, to a T. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a simple beat to it uh, and a little bit slower than the usual kind of Euro trance is that I normally know or and or listen to. So uh, I enjoyed that. They got Bad Computer with Lifeline. Um, yes, this may sound pretty much just like every other uh, Electro House track from Bad Computer, uh, but it's a style that I'm all in for and always enjoy. So uh, that is Bad Computer. You've heard the song before. It sounds a lot like his other stuff, but it is a good song. They got Memba and Kahani with Transcendence. The East meets, meets West EP is out now from Memba. Just a quick three-track EP, as most of their EPs are. Uh, yeah, got a bit of a Moomba beat to this. A little more uh, Moomba kind of reggaeton influence in some of these tracks this week. And um, yeah, I like the tone and style of it uh, quite a bit, but I found there wasn't a whole ton of variety to go with it. Um, other than that kind of one melody that I thought was maybe a touch too loud as well, uh, it, they're just... It had a cool sound to it, but it just didn't really do much with it. But uh, I did enjoy it, so I think the good outweighs the bad, which is why it's here in good. Uh, then we got Inzo and Ellis Dream with Dopamine. The side quest EP is out now from Inzo. And uh, yeah, this is a new kind of another three track quick EP from him. As uh, he said, it was a bit more of a house, house approach rather than his more nature-esque uh, one that he just did recently. And so, um, yeah, really engaging and powerful house with some flashy drop sequences and uh, not quite what I expected from Inzo, but I really quite enjoyed it. 
And we've got Pixel Terror with Song 2 or Woohoo, which is the uh, kind of drum step, more rock heavy uh, cover of Blur's uh, Song 2, which is what everyone, you don't really know the name of it, but you know it's the Woohoo song, and which is why they have Woohoo in brackets. But uh, yeah, lots of rock elements, like I said, with a, like heavy snares and prominent guitar lead lines. Uh, and I just think it's a, a solid cover of the original and I think is a, uh, a nice modern rendition of the track, which uh, everyone always seems to enjoy. So. We've got Tokyo Machine with Stereo. Uh, first half of this track is your kind of classic high-energy Tokyo Machine. Uh, but there's a weird, like, uh, bass solo that kind of bridges uh, into a more destructive back end. Um, something that I, I, I feel like is, is, is Phoenix Wright do a lot of bass sounds or, like, just, like, bass solos. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like Japanese games out there that kind of have this very distinct style to it. And, and that is this one. Um, yeah. One of uh, one of Tokyo's more creative tracks as of late, I would say. And uh, I drew this one quite a bit. Then we got Kei Trinata and Raquel Jordan with Lover Friend. A super clean production from Kei Trinata here. And then silky smooth vocals from Raquel. Uh, I just adore the little synth blips here and there, especially in that uh, kind of back end of the track right before the kind of uh, outro segment. And um, yeah, I think those kind of synth little blips uh, highlight Raquel's vocals a lot too. And I just think this is a solid Deep House cut. And um, Kei Trinata just doesn't miss really. They've got Sudden Death and Hades with Don't You Dare Go Hollow. I uh, really love this collab. This was shipped all over the internet, and they were just pushing this hard. And um, I think the song uh, is, it backs up the, the the marketing there. And I think this encapsulates all the best parts of each of these producers in Sudden Death and Hades, uh, and then just is like a super easy, marketable track, easy one to get into for both of these artists. This is just like the perfect intro track to both these producers, I think, and that just manages to be one of my favorites from both of them. So, uh, way to go. Then we've got Niels Hoffman, Casbo, and Vancouver Sleep Clinic with Running in a Dream. Uh, this kind of atmospheric progressive house with this track uh, with a very, very shimmering production to it all. Um, I love Vancouver Sleep Clinic's vocals. I just love when he sings. Personally, I just think he's, he's actually probably one of my favorite vocalists out there, even though he's not the, I would say, like, strongest vocalist. There's just something about his resonance that I personally resonate with. But uh, yeah, it's also my first listen of Niels Hoffman and I just need to go back. I don't know if he does a lot of this kind of um, atmospheric progressive house. I don't know what he's normally like, um, but uh, this was uh, this was really solid. I really enjoyed this. And I think this is an upcoming album from Niels Hoffman that I'll have to review if it doesn't come out in December, at least in 2024. So uh, but then we're moving into Skybreak's Chroma, our penultimate track of the week. Um, Skybreak is always a treat to listen to. Always love what he's putting out. Um, this new track is, as always, jazzy and colorful, and especially with this one being Chroma, I think that's a perfect um, descriptor for this track. I think colorful is a great way to put it. But uh, yeah, bright synth licks and punchy bass lines are the name of the game with this one. And uh, this is just um, peak Skybreak through and through. And then our my best track of the week, my favorite track of the week, is uh, Crystal Skies and Hailing with Stardust. A beautifully expansive melodic track. I know I talked earlier about Midas as being one of the best melodic dubstep tracks I think I've heard. This, I think, is my number one favorite melodic track of 2023. Uh, Hailing killed her vocals. The production from K Crystal Skies really feels like you're kind of flying through the stars. Um, and I just love that the track got a big final movement. It was longer, and it just had a, a really expansive explosive grand finale, which I think um, melodic stuff is not, uh, they're pseudo doing it, they're fake doing it, and I think uh, Crystal Skies really did it this time, so uh, yeah, but that's been uh, this week in EDM, those have been my opinions on 28 tracks that came out this week, let me know what you think of any and all in the comment section below, but other than that, my name is uh, Dakota from Botai Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.